Hi, welcome to the video. Chef Projet, and we are to demonstrate how to make some creme caramel. Those nice little flan with a little coating of caramel on top of it. Okay. Um, in pastry, that would be part of our custard category. Uh, creme caramel is what we call a baked custard. We have three different custards. Baked, stirred, and starch bun. Stirred will be a creme anglaise, starch bun will be your bad iron cream, something thicker, or a creme pâtissier. Okay? So to make those little flan, I'm going to need for that 200 grams of sugar and a little bit of water to moisten it. That's going to be our caramel. Then I will need three eggs, half vanilla bean, 75 of grams of sugar, granulated sugar, and a 500 milliliter of milk. That will yield four little ram can like those. First we'll be starting by making our caramel. I'm gonna put my sugar, the 200 gram of sugar, because we have two amount of sugar, 200 gram and 75 gram. The 200 gram is for our caramel. I'm gonna put that into my little saucepan here. Add the water to it, cold water. It's very important that you have cold water. I'm gonna kind of stir the sugar into that. I'm going to turn the heat on and make it come to a nice little amber color. And we don't want the caramel to be too dark unless you like your creme caramel to be on the bitter side. If it's too dark, it'd be too bitter though. So I would say a nice brown color, color of that egg, it'd be fine. When those caramel are ready to be baked, I will put them into that little pan here in which I will add some boiling water. So we'll cook them in what we call a bain-marie. And they will go like that, okay? The water needs to be boiling, it's very important. And those creme caramel will be baked at 300 and 325 degrees Fahrenheit in your oven. You wanna be on the middle shell of the oven, not on the bottom and not too high. If it's too much on the bottom, they may just crumble on you. So middle shell is what you want. And make sure you don't go above 325. Okay, so we're going to wait for the caramel to form and while that's happening I'm going to put in that pan here my milk 500 milliliters of milk which I'm going to bring to a simmer with my vanilla bean here but the vanilla bean I'm going to scrap see I cut it in half and I'm going to scrap the inside to get as much flavor as possible by extracting those little pot of uh, the vanilla that, that are in just by scrapping it like that and getting those into it with of course the bean also huh? that's just to make sure that we release as much as flavor as possible from that vanilla bean just like that that would bring it to a simmer when my caramel is done the caramel, you just let it melt down, you know, and do its thing. Don't stir it or anything. If you see that it creates some crystal on the side, using a pastry brush, you could wash them up a little bit. This way, using a little bit of water, and you will wash them up like that, so they don't crystallize on your sugar. But when you're making a caramel, it's not, it's not that important anyway since uh, it will melt down. Okay. I'm going to break my three eggs here. I have three eggs, gonna be all egg. I'm going to break them into my bowl. And I will add to it my sugar. I'm going to add the sugar and stir everything together. We call that blanchir. Uh, to blanch our sugar with our egg yolk. Just to homogenize everything well together. Keep 
keeping an eye on my car there, make sure it doesn't brown too much. Huh? Okay, and I'm going to keep that aside for now. Okay. Couple of things about your caramel. When the caramel gets to the color you want, you have to be very careful because it carry over. Like if I take that caramel to the desired color and I just let it set for a couple seconds, couple of minutes, that caramel might burn uh, because the pan will remain hot and the sugar will actually still cook. So you want to be careful when it's at the right color to use it right away, pour it right away into your ram can. It's very important. This is our caramel that's cooking nicely. And we're going to wait again till it get to a nice amber color. Our caramel is at the right color. You see that beautiful amber color? Now, right away, we want to pour it into our ram can. So we'll take it and pour it like that nicely. A nice little coat, I would say you want like a layer of two, three millimeter of caramel. Okay? Just like that. Now it's very important to let it set till it cool down. The caramel need to feel, to feel hard before you add your custard to it. If you add it too quick and the caramel didn't set, it will just mix with your custard and you won't get the appropriate result. It's very important. So you let it like that till it's nice and firm and then we will add our custard. We're going to make that custard right now. So I have my blanched egg here. I'm going to bring that milk here to a boil and then I will mix it with my uh, mixture of egg and sugar but I want to do what we call tamper I want to add a little bit of uh, milk to my egg yolk to my egg mixture I'm sorry stir it in add a little bit more stir it in and add a little bit more till the end so they don't curdle on me if I just take everything all the milk and put it in everything's gonna curdle I'm going to make some kind of cooked egg and we don't want that so we need to temper it okay then I will skim up the foam some foam is going to create because we're stirring that in and we're adding air into it so we're going to have a little bit of foam but we have to remove so that foam doesn't just dry on top of our creme caramel while it's baking it's an important point okay I can see that my milk is going to be ready very soon Caramel look good, smell great, and let it cool down. Sometimes I just move it around because here it's hot, so it stays on a hot surface. So I move it so it cool down a little quicker. That's the only reason. The milk is almost coming to a simmer. It's starting. In some recipe that you may have seen previously, it may say to strain the mixture at the end. I won't, because I want to keep as much as that vanilla bit into it. Oh, it's coming to a boil. We have to stop it right away. It almost overflow here. So now I'm taking the milk, and again I'm gonna add a little bit. Mix it in, gently. Don't mix too. Don't put too much energy here while you're doing that because if you stir it too much you will develop too much foam into that custard and the more you develop the more you have to remove after. So just stir it gently, no rush. Here. 
And here I'm going to leave behind my two vanilla beans. This is. And I'm not going to strain that. I want to keep those nice little pots of vanilla inside, so I'm not going to strain. Oh, one thing I want to mention. You have your pot with your caramel here. Huh? Uh, if you're trying to wash that like that, it's going to be a pain. Put some water in it. Bring it to a boil and let that caramel dissolve in your water so you wash it up this way. It's going to be much easier. Okay. That right here. And now I'm going to skim off a little bit of that foam here. Remove it lightly. If not, it's just going to dry into the oven and we want to prevent that. Even if that creme caramel, which we call also creme renversée, because we're going to flip it over out of the mold. And that's, uh, there's two ways to serving it into the mold or out of the mold. Usually we serve it out of, out of the mold. Here I'm going to bring that water to a boil to put after into my little pan here. So when you're removing that foam, you want to make sure not to remove too much of a custard too. Huh? Okay, I removed enough. That's good. Now I'm gonna check if my caramel is set. Almost. You need a couple, couple more minutes. By the time the water comes to a boil, we should be ready. So my water is coming to a boil. I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna put that into my pan here. Huh? Not too much water. One centimeter is good enough, huh? Till it come up here uh, to the ramekin. Don't put too much because then after it may reach into your ramekin as you're trying to put that into your oven, and then those will be ruined. Uh, if any water gets into the custard, it won't work at all. So be very careful. And this, I'm going to take it actually and put it right here, very close to my oven, so I don't have to travel too much when my custard are into it. Then I'm going to take the custard, I'm going to put those here, like that, and I'm going to fill them up here again. So again, I don't have to travel too far away uh, from my oven, too much from my oven. So I get the custard, I put that inside, I fill the caramel, it's nice and firm, I can add my custard into it. I'm not going to fill it completely right now, again, because I don't want to make a mess as I go into the oven. I see some little bubbles here, but I'm going to remove. I'm going to remove them using myself a little piece of parchment paper. But I'm going to run like that on them, and that's going to kind of take care of the situation. So we want to remove those little bubbles and to remove them I just use a little piece of parchment paper and I'm going to just tap them up delicately with it. You could use also the tip of a knife but the parchment paper looks good because kind of remove them like that with it, see? Yeah. You kind of absorb them very well. Voilà. Yeah. See this one here? There is, oh, there is a little bit left here. I have to go like that. Okay, now into the oven, 325 degrees Fahrenheit for around 30 minutes. Make sure that that water here 
was boiling. If you put it cold, again, it will may take an hour and you might overcook your creme caramel. Into the oven. Be very careful, huh? And now, while it's here, I'm going to add a little bit more of custard just to make sure it comes all the way to the top. Huh? And I'm delicately going to slide them inside. Close the oven. And we let it cook. 30 minutes. Creme caramel are done. Just remove them from the oven. Now you know they're cooked. If you move them around like that, and they don't jiggle too much. Okay? Just a tiny little, a thick wave I would say, you should see. Huh? It should be moving much at all. Now I need to let them set, let them cool down. The best is to let them cool down 24 hours. So the caramel inside has time to kind of melt and when you unmold them, the caramel will slide down completely. If you don't wait enough, that caramel, you're still gonna have some on it, but not as much, okay? So up to you, you could let them cool down in the fridge couple hours and enjoy them. They'll be very good. You won't have as much caramel coming up the bottom or you wait 24 hours, you're patient and uh, it'll still be also very good. Even better. I put vanilla today in my milk. Another thing you could add to them and make it delicious, it's some orange zest. It's very very good too in those. Just thought I'd let you know. So I'm gonna wait me not 24 hours because I want to finish that video today. Couple hours, let them cool down, and we'll, then I will unmold them. So the creme caramel, they rested two good hours. I'm going to unmold them. I'm going to show you how we do that. Huh? Make sure your hands are clean. You're going to use your hands to unmold those. Okay? If I decide to put some gloves to do that, it's going to stick to the glove, the technique I will show you. You could use a knife and go around like that, but many times I saw that when you use a knife, you just make some mark on the creme caramel, or you just don't cut straight onto the mold and then you leave some in, okay? For me, the best way to release them is to do what I'm gonna show you right now. Clean hands, and you press on the edge like that, okay? You press delicately onto them, You take your plate, put it like that, reverse it, and you're going to shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it. And then you have to do a little bit of magic like that. Ooh, release yourself. And then you pour it, and it releases itself beautifully. And then you pour the excess of caramel on top of it. And here you have it, a beautiful creme caramel. You know if it's well done, if you look around here and you don't see any little bubbles, that will mean that your creme caramel overcooked. If it's nice and smooth, it's beautiful and perfect. If you overcooked a little bit, it's still going to be very good. I'm going to enjoy with that some little sphere that I made here. It's a great accompaniment of cigarettes. Going to enjoy it with that. You can look for my video on how to make those two. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know. Bye-bye. Thank you.